Ave Dale, Lion, Lion Tamer and a whole lot more. Makeup. Thank you. <laughs> did, you uh, did you want to do that? For, it's from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, this is the makeup I did for The Wizard of Oz, and it was louder than this. It was bigger than this. I didn't know it was everything. But um, no, I like, enjoy doing different types of makeup. Do you it's teach yourself how to do it? Yeah, I think it's the only way you can do it, really. If you read things by books, you tend to have a book in front of you, and you're going, oh my god, that line's a section of a millimetre out of place, you know. Yeah. And you sort of, what else have you done? What other character makeup have you done? Well, I've done endless amounts of pantomime dames from Ugly Sister Widow Twank, you know, that sort of stuff. But um, I was in Oliver at school and I was, had to do the makeup for Fagin. It was all latex noses and beards and things and bags under the eyes and long, scraggy, bald wigs and things. And that was at school? Yeah. And that was uh, at school. I was, was there 15. anyone in Southend who taught you how to. No, it's just a case of going out and buying it and slapping it on your face. Here I am, dim the lights and watch Curtain rides, trail me follow spot Makeup is smooth, costume clean and bright Smile, smile on butterflies inside as I now impart feelings of the heart and soul. Here I am, shine bright like a star. Strange phenomenon Now beat drum Let the cymbals crash Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah Turan, hurrah, transvestite and I'm not a transsexual. I'm a gay person that does a, a drag act as, a, as an act. Um, two, people do confuse the two. You know, they think if you're a drag act, you run around in frocks all the time and stockings and suspenders and wigs and you're, and you're, and you're outrageous all the time. Outrageous I might be, but I don't run around in stockings and frocks all right. the time. Not only half the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, only when you're paid to. Only, exactly, only when I'm paid to. You know, um, I am an act. It's my profession. I do it as a living. Although I send up people like Liza Mullaney and other stars, they are recognisable characters that the audience can see. They can, especially gay audiences, they can see the, the thing that you can send up in a certain person's mannerisms and facial expressions. And they laugh at that because they can see it on a, on a big screen, but they can see it on a stage done by me, done bigger. And, and done more uh, with more of that, more of an attack approach. I don't send up women. I, I, um, because the women that I didn't, no woman would ever act like I act on stage. I mean, I don't wear padding of any description. I don't pad my hips and I don't wear false boobs and all that sort of thing. And they, they know from the beginning that I am a man in drag. When people go shopping, some boys they go hopping to buy them a diamond, a rupee, a gem. But when I fill my trolley, I don't need no lolly. For when I go shopping, it's strictly for men, 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 men. Not for South, East or West, in Paris or Siam. Wherever I go, they always know that I always get my man. Or down in a route in a tube or a traffic jam Through rain or snow 
know, they always know that I always met my man Ooh, they're in such big, big demand to quench my appetite They never say he done him wrong, cause I always do him right While trying on a pair of shoes, I look so sad and forlorn I tell the boy who's serving me, oh, go careful with that horn I guess you bet, he's been wrong, yet I've got this master plan There ain't no doubt, there ain't no drug, I always get my man theatrical stuff did you think you'd be doing a performance like you do now no never never I always wanted to be a great actor but I was so quiet at school because even then I knew I was gay do you think the teachers knew that you were gay did they feel that you were gay were I they think doing the same thing so, as the kids I or? think so yes yeah, so they, they like to humiliate me so that the teachers could get the kids on their side you see one te teacher in particular was a real bitch and that was my art teacher as your art teacher I feel I must have words with you not because you are generally thought to be unpopular, overweight, effeminate, and a visual holocaust to the eyes, but because there is a marked difference in your work compared to the rest of the class. Please note the effort that has gone into these. Now, unless you attain these standards, I see no future for you in the world of art. So would you kindly take your little doodling and try a little harder, dear? So even in those days, I knew I was gay. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um... When we used to play in the playground, we used to have this huge, great playground yeah. thing. Um, and the boys would have to play at one end. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's just my show for ignoring. Oh, Look, the boys have to oh, put... Yeah. The boys would play at one end of the playground and the girls would play at the other end of the playground. There was this line down the middle and they used to get into so much trouble for being always being caught in the girls' playground. Every playtime, every day, boys and girls come out to play. Boys and girls at different ends, we've all their friends. Girls and boys like different games, girls and boys are not the same. Don't you never cross the line, and all the time I'm stuck in the middle. Stuck in the middle, stuck in the middle, dig in the middle. Every school there's always one, teacher picks on making fun, gets the edge of teacher's wit, well I was it. Boys can pick on teacher's school, kick on senseless after school, teachers didn't want to know, nowhere to go. I'm stuck in the middle, pig in the middle. In the middle, pig in the middle. My kid brother with his mates waiting by the playground gates. If they beat me up again, then he'd do them. My kid brother, do you see? He was looking after me. One thing hurts you more than pain And that is shame I'm stuck in the middle Pig in the middle Stuck in the middle Pig in the middle I had puppets at home I had a playground of my own That was my world, I was free In the middle, there was me Every playtime, 
every day Boys and girls come out to play Boys and girls at different ends With all their friends Girls and boys like different games Girls and boys are not the same Don't you never cross the line And all the time I'm stuck in the mid Pig in the mid Stuck in the mid Pig in the middle Stuck in the middle Pig in the middle Stuck in the middle Pig in the middle Stuck in the middle When you came to leave school and you'd done all the theatre stuff and the teachers could see that you were really good at it, did they give you any advice as to how to go into theatre as a career? My idea. No one into the theatre as a career, love. It's just a fantasy. Look, I really don't think you can help me. The thing is not to think of a job as a soul destroying activity for which you receive a meagre paycheck at the end of the week. Yes, I agree, but... We have to come up with something that suits your personality, sensibilities and accomplishments. After all, we are talking about the rest of your life here. Yes, I know that, but... Fortunately, there is a little job going at the supermarket as a shelf stocker. Now, if you'd just like to take this recommendation down... Well, actually, I just... I, um, it doesn't sound very... Yes. Well... I, I want to be an entertainer. Well, it is a very entertaining supermarket. Yeah, well, it just doesn't sound very glamorous to me. Well, you do get a free pair of overalls. 38% British polyester can't be bad. Yeah, but I want to be an entertainer. Well, we'll have a little look anyway, shall we? Now, it says here that you'll be handling internationally known groceries. Now, a lot of these are advertised on television, and some of these breakfast cereals are stars in their own right. You'll be hobnobbing with some of the most famous food products of Western society and you'll begin to appear in all the gossip columns. Shoppers will want your autograph, you'll have your own dressing room, your picture will appear in every newspaper right across the land and you will receive fan mail. Um, crowds will follow you absolutely everywhere and hordes of hysterical teenagers will tear out your clothes and top politicians will seek your company. Um, in matters of statecraft you'll become indispensable. It will be a lot easier if you become greedy for power and stage the occasional coup d'etat. Eventually you will become president of the world and after a six month trial period the entire universe will be your domain. Sounds great. And then of course there's the early retirement scheme to think of. How long were you unemployed? Well I was unemployed for about nine months. What did you after do the rest of the time? You... God it was awful. I was just walking around the streets, up and down the seafront and all that sort of thing. I was on the pier one day, I was sort of like just being miserable and walking up and down the pier and all the rest of it. I saw people fishing and I thought, oh God, this, I just couldn't get over how boring life must have been for them, to be honest. And then suddenly there was, I saw this person screaming, running down the pier screaming, it's on fire, it's on fire. And I, I knelt down and said, thank you. I didn't even know what it was to be gay. I just knew I was attracted to other men. I was just attracted to men and not women. I thought I was just the only one like it. I tried to be part of it because I didn't know any different. I thought, well, I've got to be like these people. But then when I'd walk down the seafront and I'd see rows and rows of old age pensioners in wheelchairs and in deck chairs just waiting to die in the sun and, and, and these big, huge, fat, men being tattooed to enhance their masculinity and women with 1960s huge blonde bouffants walking down the streets. They all work so hard at being straight and they all try to impress each other with it and to, I couldn't identify with that at all. I used to do a drama class um, at the local technical college in the evening to come out of myself a bit more. I knew I, I had to do something with them um, where I had to dress up be somebody else because I had more fun being somebody else than I did being me. It was more, it made life worth living. It made, it made there some, something to look forward to, to put on a show and be somebody else. How they ever got the word amusement baffles me to this day. I just didn't find them amusing at all. They were just places to spend money. No, they weren't amusing. They were all exactly the same. They all had slot machines, they all had pinball machines. I just, I just find the whole place a big pain and a, an awful memory, especially in the summer. If money and power was no object, I think I'd like to turn Southend into a gay resort with lots of lots of fairy lights. <laughs> At one point, I just become really, really depressed, and I was like really miserable. Nothing was going right for me. I didn't have no money. I didn't have many friends. I was 
itching to do something and I didn't know what. So I went into this pub along the seafront. So I went to the bar and ordered a drink and I was sitting there drinking. I was getting drunk. I never got drunk before. I think I had about two lagers or something. <laughs> that was on me back. <laughs> you know, right. Um, and right at the end of the other bar, there was this group of what would now be called punk rockers, but were then, I don't know what you call them then. I mean, we're talking about, well, eight years ago or something. I don't know when it was sort of like was first, punk was first on the scene type of thing. And there was about five punks in the whole of South End, and everyone sort of went, <gasps> punks, you know, type of thing. Anyway, these blokes were at the end of the bar, and one of them I quite liked, I quite fancied. I'd never been with a, a man or a woman or anything it comes to that at that age. And um, at that time, I was about 16, I think, maybe a bit younger. And I thought, well, why not? So I just, I was looking at him sort of like this, you know, through me, like, through me eyes, you know, like this. And he was looking back and I thought, oh, great. And then he came come over to me and I thought, oh, God. And he said, what are you bleeding, staring at? I thought, oh, my God, here we go. I'm going to get a glass in my face now, dear. And I was drunk out of my head, you know. So I just pulled myself out and I said, well, I ain't staring at you, love, like that. I said, don't flatter yourself, dear. Like this is then. I, th I just didn't care. I thought, well, I'm, I'm gay, I'm not going to hide it. If they want to beat me up, let them beat me up. I've been beaten up before, it's no big deal. So he says, are you one of those bleeding queers? Like, it's just <laughs> and so I said, yes, I am. So what? What's the big deal? And he says, oh, I can't stand you people. I said, you said you make me sick. I said, well, what makes me so strange? He said, have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? <laughs> I said, look at you. I said, look at you, your hair and your safety pins and your ripped T-shirts. I said, you, you're not so perfect. And I said, what have I said? You know, I thought, cover me mouth. I thought, oh, take it all back. And I thought I was going to get a fist, you see, in the face, that is. And um, I was just sort of, he was just sort of bit really aggressive like this. And I thought, oh, God, that's it. But then he said to me, can I get you a drink? He said, oh, he said, do you know what I'm going to do? I said, what? He said, I'm going to get you a drink. I thought, oh, oh, that sort of thing. I, I was quite serious. But it was great because he saw, I, I stood up to him and I, I, I didn't deny my gayness. I mean, he just sort of appreciated me for it. And, that, and then I became friendly with this crowd. And they, they sort of took me in. It was really nice. I was, did you become one of the gang? Yes, I did. I did. I dyed my hair and I had a safety pin and a ripped T-shirt. Wow, you know, a few bits of chains yeah, and that. Were you still living at home? Yes, I was. My, my mum couldn't cope with it. She sort of, she just couldn't handle it at all. You know, oh my God, find the punk. About six months, because I couldn't get a job. I kept going for these interviews, just saying, I'm sitting there going, <laughs> picking my nose and wiping it under the desk and all that sort of thing. Great big mouthfuls of chewing gum. And something people would say, oh, nigga, we don't know what time you are. You know. So my mum said to me, look, David, the best thing you can do is dye your hair back and put a hatchet parting down the middle and go and put his, get yourself a suit and go and get yourself a job. And so I thought, well, I'd better do something. I can't go and beat people up for the rest of my life. Anyway, don't pay very well. And so, um, so I just. I just did that. I went for an interview and I got a job in B-Jams. Oh, sorry, frozen food store. <laughs> a famous frozen food store in South End, which was like, um, sorry, folks. And it was like, um, it was awful. God, it was awful. It was awful. Because it was so routine, you know, nine till five, get up in the morning, put your drag on, go to work. Is that when you answered the job out in the stage? That's right, yeah. That's when I went off to the great big, big sin city there and and become a store. I become like, you know, I, in, in this awful club. What, did you go there first or what? Rang them up? I rang them first. Yeah. I mean, I was really desperate, you know, to get out of sight. I just hated the place. But I really loved it. What did you feel when, when they said it was a drag act? What did you feel about it? Well, I didn't care. I just, I, I, I thought, well, sod it. Why not? We'll just do it, you know. I'll just go out there and I'll just do it. I just, I don't care, you know. I mean, it, it's awful. I mean, if they'd asked for a lion tame, I would have done it. Take whatever they would like My frankincense and myrrh You could take
take my rocks and my party frocks Only sweetie, not my friends You could take the paintings from my wall All my Van Goghs and Rembrandt You could take my rings and my old G-strings Only sweetie, not my friends They mean a lot to me, quite sentimentally I would never part with them I have a heart to heart with them You could take her paintings from her wall All her Van Goghs and Rembrandt's You could take her rings and her old G-strings Only sweetie, not her first Oh, I don't want my two wheels back Cause you can take the car from my garage All the roads and its chauffeur You could take my piles and my old gargoyles Only sweetie, not my first Oh, my first No, 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 my first I refer to my
And as I make a decadent decline From social life and politics I ask you to be kind And kindly pass the cocktail sticks My life's a party My life's a ball My life is The happiest of all So come Come join the fun Come laugh and play And come be happy, happy, happy All day If your mum didn't like you being a punk, what on earth does she think when you went up to London for the first time to do a drag act? She didn't want me to go, which is only natural because I'm her eldest son, I'm a firstborn, a baby, I suppose. And um, she couldn't, she didn't want me to go. She didn't um, want you to go to London, or she didn't want you to be a, a drag artist? Neither. I mean, when I first told her that I was going to, for an audition at a club, she said, what for? I said, well, to do impressions. And she said, of who? And I went, well, Mick Jagger, Gary Glitt. I thought, well, think of all the butch men you can think of. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then at the end, I went, Liza Minnelli. And she went, what? And I said, well, I'm doing Liza Minnelli. She says, oh, God. She says, you're not doing drag, are you? And I said, yes. She says, oh, God. And she was really, really upset at me. She, she, was really, she took it very badly, actually. Um, but, as, you know, I love, I really think the world of my mum, my dad and my family, but I, I had to do what was best for me. I wasn't content to live in South End. I wasn't content to have a nine to five job. I wasn't content getting married and having kids and fighting what I was. Why should I? You know, why should I? And so she didn't like the idea, but because 
My father said to my mum, look, if you don't let him go, he's going to leave home and go anyway. We might as well give him our blessing and let him go. So that's what they did. I was only 17 and I've never been to London before. I've been to, like, London Zoo and that sort of thing. But that was it. Perish the thought of living here. It was the biggest in the city, as I said before. It was like everything awful happened, you know. You got picked up by strange people, you know. There was, there was rape and theft and murder. That's and how you love a story. Exactly, yeah, yeah you know. And um, that's how it was. And that through her eyes, that's how it was. And that's how it's always been. Although it'll always be. But I've, I think I've educated her a bit now with it. But I mean, now she's. Fantastic. She comes up and sees my show, she cries at the end with pride, she applauds and she meets all my friends who are, to say the least, aren't very butch, you know, and, and I'm so pleased now. She knows about my lifestyle, the way I am, she meets boyfriends, the lot. And I, I'm so proud of her because of it. That's just great. I didn't like the punk song very much. You didn't? No. Fantastic. I didn't like the swearing, did you, Mum? No, I didn't like the swearing. She liked when I said, you know. <laughs> When you first went, uh, you know, when you went to that club you were talking about, did you go in in your costume? No, no, I went in just as a man, which, which was a costume. What did you come out of? How are you all? It's a nice crowd here, isn't it? Love the windscreen wipers. What do you think of this place? It's lovely, isn't it? Not the windscreen wipers. It's not London Palladium, I suppose. Well, what do you expect, honey? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's lovely. Look at the lamp. I know, I've seen that. I know, I know it's got life in its own. <laughs> Are you no, with us? No. Should we join hands and contact the living? <laughs> <laughs> did you go on and do another act? How did you put your act together when you left uh, that, that club? Did you do a separate... Uh... Well, I couldn't really do anything for a while because all the costumes were in my contract and everything. So when I left, the costumes stayed behind. I had nothing. So I... I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. So I went off to a, a hostel in Fulham with my little carrier bag in one hand and a, something else in the other. And I just sort of went in and I said, you know, I need somewhere to stay. I, had no mu I didn't have much money. It was quite awful, actually, really. Anyway, to make a long story short, I met this boy prostitute there. And um, he said to me, oh, if you've got no money, come and do what I do. And I said, you must be joking, I couldn't do that. No, I've got some pride, love. I said, I can't do that. So he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll lend you some money. You can get yourself an act together. And I, said, I mean, I didn't know him from Adam. I only met him a couple of days. And he said, do you want some money? I said, well, not really. I said, I don't want to borrow any. You know, I feel awkward. He said, no, let me see. I've got, no, I've got plenty. And he pulled his mattress up and he pulled out 200 quid and he slapped it in my hand and said, there, go and get yourself some costumes and get yourself an act together. And when you've got some money, pay me back. If you can work to a gay audience and be successful, you're made. Fortunately, I've got a, a wide gay following. But the thing is, they don't find you attractive off stage. Um, how can I pull it? If, if, you, if you go out at, at night to a club, <laughs> for instance, or you're a drag actor and you go out to the club, now, say you go to your average gay bar right. club, and there's all men lying in the walls, they're all after each other, right? Mm. And there's you, okay? Me, as I am, an ordinary person. I happened to do a drag act as a living. Okay, I'm a, I'm a drag act. He's a bank manager. He's a road sweeper. He's a fireman. Okay, I'm a drag artist. Fair enough. Right. If you find a piece of male companionship for the evening out of this crowd, yeah. and you take them home, or they take you home, yeah. and they find out you're a drag artist, they don't want to know. They like dismiss it. They, they they wouldn't dream of going with a drag artist. But they go and enjoy you and, and Oh yeah, they'll watch me and applaud sleep. and go potty, but they never think of sleeping with me. Well, what's wrong with a drag artist? Well, I don't know, I've not been with one. <laughs> when I saw you in the pub tonight, I could tell at a glance that you were a person. That's just amazing. Yeah. A lot of guys wouldn't have seen that. A lot of guys just go in the pub for a quick pickup. Yeah, yeah, that's really sad. Yeah. They're not interested in you as an individual. To them, it's what you look like that counts, not who you are. Mm, that's true. Uh, would you like another comp plan? Uh, oh, no, no, thanks, but that was really nice, thank you. You haven't got to rush off yet, have you? No.
I'm not keeping you up, am I? No, I haven't got to get up for work in the morning. Are you on the dole? Yeah. What a worry. Yeah, it is. Have you got to get up for work in the morning? No, no, I don't work during the day. Oh, what do you do? I'm oh, nothing special. I'm a track artist. I'll call you a taxi. Something I said? It's got a lot to do with clones, as it were. I don't know if you've heard of clones. I think everyone's heard of clones, but on the gay scene, clones is a big thing. It's images. It's let's dress up, let's be men. Right. Right, but when I mean men, I mean men. I don't mean your average male in a shirt and trousers and a tie. I mean the 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 over the top caricature male, right. the big he man male. That type of look. Denim right, so we've got denims, we've got shows. leather, we've got all the masculine images, moustaches, hairy chest. You've got hairy chest, you're made, love. Um, string vest with nipples hanging out. <laughs> Pierced nipples, it goes to the extreme sometimes. Mm. The extremes, they're not content to be men, they've got to be masculine men. If you're a drag artist, you're threatened by that because you are instantly a feminine man. And feminine men, don't, I don't know about in the old days, but now, feminine men do not go with masculine men, it's not done. Ma masculine, it's got male and male, and that's it. So you know? they see your act as see, being part of your personality? Yes, they do. They think, why shot that's you up there. If you're not acting, that's you. Underneath all that drag, it's you. They say you got a joke by first impressions. They say that peril oft proclaims the man. So farewell fur and feathers, I'm putting on me levers I'm gonna look as macho as I can Nowadays you work out your aggressions You look as mean and moody as the rest Nowadays the men all seem butcher than Burt Reynolds And won't betide the one who's overdressed And so on Mondays I dress up like a soldier Tuesdays I dress up like James Dean Thank you Wednesday with the men in A lot of dirty denim On Thursday I'm Maureen On Friday just a rope around each shoulder While they chain me to the wall a day or two With a haircut like a monkey's And the suit with coloured hankies I'm as much a man as any one of you <clears throat> oh God, we went through all that liberation You'd think things really wouldn't be the same And yet you feel you still Must go out dressed to kill Or at the very least dressed up to mime We went through all that trial and tribulation We went through all the glory and the grief it seems an awful shame that the cry should be the same I'm a real human being underneath Nevertheless, on Mondays I dress up like a sailor Tuesdays a skinhead on the game Midweek is just a filler as a mercenary gorilla Then a lumberjack from Main Timber Friday's a full S&M regalia by the time the week is through If I ever could remove it I'd be quite prepared to prove it I'm as much a man as any one of you One more time on Mondays I dress up like a soldier Tuesdays I dress up like James Dean <laughs> Wednesday with the men in A lot of dirty denim On Thursday I'm a the whole thing's a charade, just like I told you I've bitten off far more than I can chew I'm turning back the clock I reckon even in a frock I'm as much a man as anyone As much a man as anyone As much a man as any one of you Yeah! I'd like, to do, I'd like to do a lot of TV work, if you excuse the pun. <laughs> but I'd, I don't know, I think Annie Walker should knock down the snug in the Coronation Street and have, and have, um, and have a drag act on there. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, 
Do you think that's a good idea in television programs? That yeah, are I do. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, Dallas, you know, we have a drag queen in Dallas. Maybe that's going a bit too far. I definitely think Carnation Street. Definitely think Rover's Return should Annie Walker. I think I think for, if if the directors are watching here of that program, I think what they should do is they should have a rival pub up the road, road that has a drag act on, and Annie Walker can't bear it, so she knocks down the snug and builds a stage. You know, and, and I don't think it'd be a good idea. And it'd get it'd get on very well with Bet Lynch. And if you're looking for him, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to dress up and be different people. It doesn't it's irrelevant whether they're men or women. It doesn't matter. They're just as far as I'm concerned, they're just characters. I like to get into somebody. As long as you're putting over a point. Yeah, exactly. Not so much a point. There's, the whole thing's got. The thing is, you've got to have fun. You know, you've got to you've got to make it a laugh. You've got to be happy with what you're doing. What about being a straight actor? If you're part of the. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a gay straight actor? <laughs> um, yeah, oh yeah, I'd like to act. I'd like to do all things. I, I'd like to. I think comedy is my my main my main asset. I'd like to do comedy. But I mean, no, there's lots of comedians that have done straight things. Roy Kinnear, for one, is very good. And, I mean, there's lots and lots of people that lots and lots of actors who started lives as comedians that go into. Look at Beryl Reed, for instance. I mean, she's fabulous. Something like that. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd like to start off in comedy and progress into acting. <laughs> and generally, you think this is the best thing you could have done. I think so. I think it's taught me a lot. So it's, it's taught me about timing, discipline, dancing. I've learnt a lot from it. I've, you've, when you do a drag act, you have to be your own boss. You have to design your own costumes. You have to set your own wigs. You have to be your own electrician. You have to be your own choreographer. It's all down to you. And it teaches you a lot. You know when you've got to be in a spotlight. You know when you've got to be in a, a, a pin light. Uh, it's all just right. You know what you've got to do. And you've got to, you've, only you can do it. You see now Turning in front of the glass Long ago in that upstairs room Turning around and then asking Do you know, will I make it soon? Will I be a star? Will I travel far? Staying all day just to gaze at a face on a TV screen Turning and saying I'll amaze you I'll be like a movie queen Till it worried dad And it drove mum mad Did you see on that day that you left Saying you'd skip the big scene do you see now? Smiling through tears when the notice went up on the theatre door. Smiling and saying, what you know, still there's gonna be plenty more. I'll be big someday, gotta make them pay. Strutting it night after night, hey don't worry, it won't be long. Turning away, turning white, just believe me, there's nothing wrong. Will you leave me? Just believe me. I'll do what I've started, so don't try and get me upset. Who's being the martyr? I'll do it, just watch me, you bet. Did you see when they parted saying maybe it's best to forget? Do you see it yet? Can you see it yet? The storm clouds have parted, you see now, and can you believe it yet? Yeah, see you stepping slowly out of the limousine. Do you see the living spitting image of the movie queen? Do you see him turn and listen to that? See them burn and glisten while the crowd just roars. Do you see the walk down stairway and the chandelier? Do you see who's kicked the train behind them saying, Will you look who's here? So good is the whole world better than any dream.
Just try this for size, just see who said you betcha!